Hello everybody. Uh, today I will discuss the remaining part of the solidification processing. So that's I make this as a solidification processing uh, tool. Actually in this particular module I will try to explain the different types of the practical solidification techniques such that to some extent we can influence the solidification processes and we can modify the structure to achieve certain benefits. So that will the different techniques I uh, will try to explain just to get an understanding or idea the overall solidification processing usually uh, we, we can see we can observe in case of the casting and welding processes. So first thing is that we see that one of the main difficulties during the solidification is the uh, this segregation. So segregation of composition so basically that is called the in the large scale it is called the macro segregation small skin very localized position it is called the uh, micro segregation. So this segregation uh, the, it means that non not uniform distribution of the composition that creates some kind of the, the defective microstructure I can say and that is mostly associated with the uh, solidification processes ok definitely if we understand the solidification process in proper way probably we can eliminate or there is a way to understand to eliminate this this segregation effect either macro segregation or micro segregation. Let us try to understand what is the segregation. First we start with the macro segregation. So macro segregation is basically the compo change of the composition over a long length basically over a long distance if there is a composition can vary over a long distance then it is called the macro segregation. But other way the micro segregation and composition actually changes in the scale of secondary dendritic arm spacing that means the scale of secondary dendritic arm spacing is very small. So in that scale if there is a change of the composition then we can say that it is a micro segregation. Now it is basically effect is something like that uh, probably during the solidification process that we know the driving force for the solidification process is the basically the temperature gradient and but in that case probably large difference in composition. So we, we say during solidification if the differences the composition differences will be enough or more if there is a non equilibrium phase exist that means probably uh, in that cases if we follow certain rapid cooling probably in that cases the, there is a chances to form the uh, non equilibrium phases or probably the allowing composition is much more then it can create some kind of the non equilibrium phases. So, Anyway, if we try to follow some kind of with deviation from the equilibrium conditions, then there is a chances of the formation of the composition differences may happen during the uh, solidification. So, in that case, that is the main link with the phases to form the some kind of the segregation effect in the solidification process. So, definitely cooling, we know that uh, the cooling rate, uh, basically cooling rate affects that the size of the dendritic arm. So, it in these cases or the spacing between the two dendritic arm that actually influenced by the cooling rate. So, it is a indirectly affect the, the uh, segregation effect, but the cooling rate affects the spacing of the dendritic, but it does not change much the solute concentration profile. So, only mainly more focus on the more influence on the spacing of the dendritic arm, but does not much influence on the concentration gradient uh, during the solidification process. Concentration gradient it means that during the solidification process if you observe there is a dendritic arm. So, this dendritic arm which is solidified and near about the dendritic arm spacings or maybe near the solidification form there might be the concentration gradient is much more. So, that means there is a variation of the concentration. So, if you see this high element content near the dendritic spacing in between as compared to the dendritic structure. So, that means in this gap the concentration variance is there, concentration gradient is there and this is more on the heavily alloy composition. That means in case of the alloy this composition gradient is much more. So, here the chances of the formation of the macro or micro segregation usually happens during the solidification process. Now, when there is a uh, this is since this it does not cooling rate does not affect the much uh, on the concentration gradient. So, therefore, 
there is a chances to that means solidification may happen over a wide range of the basically wide range the solidification can happen or maybe we can accept the solidification a particular solidification may happen over a wide range of the uh, cooling rate. So, because cooling rate does not much influence on the concentration gradient. So, therefore, we see that if this if we follow these two figures figure 1 and 10 here you can try to understand that micro segregation if you see the micro segregation we are looking into the scale of the dendritic we just focusing on the dendritic structure and within the because dendritic structure you can expect that it is a in the order of the uh, it is a very small order of the nanometer scale. So, there you can see that in that cases there is a composition gradient also very I can say that very localized position there is a composition gradient or composition changes are there. So, that actually creates some kind of the micro segregation, but macro segregation if you see over a long range. So, even in the range of the millimeter in the order of the millimeter in that scale if the this there is a variation of the composition then we can say it is called the macro segregation, but all this micro macro segregation is occurs because of the the solidification in an alloy system. Now, you see that factors which are the different factors are responsible for the macro segregation. So, first we try to look at the macro segregation what are the factors first is the shrinkage. So, you know there is a during the solidification one phase solidify from liquid phase to solid phase definitely it is associated with the some kind of the shrinkage volume and that is the called the thermal contraction also. So, that means shrinkage occurs and that creates some kind of the thermal contraction may happen due to the shrinkage of the different alloying elements during the solidification. Apart from this thing there is a some density differences in the interdendritic liquid. So, definitely so liquid in between the interdendritic part there is a density are different from the which is already from the dendritic structure. So, interdendritic liquid having some some kind of the density differences. Now, even there is a some density differences between the liquid and the solid phase also and so, so when there is a density differences definitely some kind of the convective flow of the liquid metal may happen within the, the dendritic arm spacing. So, therefore, it that creates the convection currents and which is temperature induced density differences. So, convection currents is usually occurs because of the density differences. So, all this factors all this phenomena is basically associated with the formation of the uh, macro segregation uh, during the uh, oiling process. Now, in general we can say that segregation is basically not expected that means it does not produce any kind of the good effect. So, rather I can say that we try to avoid always the segregation so, to get a very good homogeneous microstructure. So, therefore, and of course, and this uh, probably the segregation also affects the mechanical properties also or other physical properties associated with this particular uh, component when you try to produce through the solidification processing. So, that in that case the segregation is not desirable in during this process. Now, the effect of the but of course, if there is a micro segregation the micro segregation effect can be eliminated if you follow some kind of the homogenization heat treatment process. So, through homogenization heat treatment process we can avoid we can eliminate the micro segregation because this segregation happens in the very small scale. So, there is a possibility is there we can eliminate through following the heat treatment, but in that case probably the but in diffusion occurs in if you look into because macro segregation happens over a large scale. So, diffusion occurs is very slowly. So, therefore, it is not always possible to avoid to eliminate the macro segregation just to follow the simply heat treatment technique. So, therefore, the only possible way to avoid the macro segregation is the try to control the solidification process. So, basically if we try to control the phenomena during the solidification process and from that point of view we can eliminate the formation of the macro segregation. But remember macro segregation is not possible to eliminate just try to follow some kind of the heat treatment techniques. So, here is the difference between the macro segregation and micro segregation. Now, we will to look at the different solidification techniques. So, there are being each and every solidification techniques having certain purpose some benefits to achieve during the solidification process. So, first I will try to describe one of the important solidification techniques is the zone melting. So, you can see the zone melting is a very, very simple method. Suppose we start with the impure metal material. So, impure material we try to eliminate this impurity in, in the metal, but in that cases if we follow the 
at the selective position the melting of this material and allow to solidification to occurs and then so control way the move the solidification from from one end to another end such that there is a continuous melting as well as the continuous solidification happens one particular direction. So, this way the methodology can be utilized just to refine the material or just to remove the impurity presence in the material. So, that is called exactly zone melting process of course, it is a very old process and old technique to eliminate the different impurities, but it is a very interesting process in the sense that we, st we just try to understand what uh, it works. So, zone melting is used to purify the element or compound or control it is the composition. So, not only the purify the element or compound at the same time it is possible to control the composition using this process by melting a short zone, short region and that liquid zone is, is travel very slowly uh, through relatively long ingot. So, if you see the if you look into follow the figure then you will be able to understand how it works. So, we start with the impure material. Now, we create the molten zone with some external heating system, we just heat the selective part molten zone creation. Now, when molten zone creation is there, then this molten zone is gradually moving under one direction. So, if you move this particular direction, if you see this movement of this molten zone, but of course, that movement depends on the what whether we are maintaining the uh, close to the equilibrium conditions of the phase and uh, uh, accordingly we just move slowly uh, along this particular direction because if it is uh, solidification problem moves very rapidly probably it influence the microstructure it can change the structure also. So, therefore, so here if you see this part is already solidified, but it is given moving this thing and of course, this keep on moving one particular direction. Now, you can see that all impurities will be collected at the end this part impurities are collected, but what are the when it moves from one position to another position during the solidification process the melting and the solidification process together they will try to accumulate the impurities one particular one particular position. So, in that way you can purify the material the solidified pure metal it is possible to, to maintain in this, in this case. So, the steps in this particular process depends on the selection of the material first then we have to create the molten zone, but that is a very limited the molten zone and then carefully movement of the molten zone. So, carefully movement of the molten zone at particular speed, then this during the molten zone definitely it will create keep on solidifying the, uh, this way uh, solidification occurs in these cases and through solidification the impurities will be probably uh, heavy or lighter impurities will be collected uh, in, in this part using this particular process. But the heating part we can use the resistant induction or radio frequency heating the using this heater zone and growth is achieved that means solidification growth or solidification front movement is as achieved or movement of the heat source relatively to the axis of the container. So, with respect to this thing growth with center the axis of the container we just try to move this heat source and of course, mainly limited to is for purification of the uh, feeding material. So, basically if you see only the impurities will be collected here, uh, but the purification of the material will be using this particular process. So, this is the way to one of the most important techniques for the zone melting which way we can simply purify the material, but following the principle of the melting and solidification. But this solidification uh, use here in a very control way. So, control way means that just to control a movement of the heat source one particular direction. Then another solidification process is sometimes we follow this uh, processing or sometimes is the inherent to the particular process also uh, this that is called the rapid solidification. So, uh, sometimes intentionally we can create the rapid solidification to understand or to get one particular uh, structure microstructure. Now, we understand the rapid solidification is basically the um, cooling rate or cooled uh, cooling usually happens at the very fast rate. So, I can say the cooling rate is very very high. So, in that cases the rapid solidification the cooling rate is usually around 10 to the 5 Kelvin per second. So, you can understand it is a very rapid cooling uh, in, in case of the rapid solidification, but uh, in that cases we follow rapid solidification we try to understand the different kind of the structure different methodology you can follow to get the rapid solidification. The different methodologies are the splat quenching, melt spinning, spray optimization, 
melt spinning, spray automation, strip casting, these are the uh, processes there. Through these techniques, we can achieve the very rapid solidification uh, of, the, uh, of the material. So, this is the very simple technique. The splat quenching is basically we can put the liquid droplet and this is the liquid droplet is flattened, flattened between the two rapidly closing copper plate. So, it is basically we put the liquid droplet and we just, just flatten using the copper copper plate. We know that we use the copper plate because copper is thermal conductivity of copper is very, very high. So, very quickly heat depreciation might occur through the copper. So, basically losing of the heat through copper is the rate is the very high. So, that is why you use the uh, copper plate. And thickness that when you try to make it the flat end of the liquid metal, then it is a very rapidly solidification occurs in liquid to solid, but use uh, this uh, through which the there the heat transfer is usually occurs through the copper plate and the final thickness of the splat can be go to around 50 micrometer. So, this way. So, this is one splat quenching, the other is the melt spinning. Melt spinning is that the in this cases thin layer of the liquid is basically ejected through the nozzle and onto a rotating copper drum. So, through a rotating copper drum we just pro, uh, push the liquid ejected liquid through the nozzle and then liquid is pulled throughout the drum, it is a, a rotating due to the centrifugal action you try to spread over the plate and of course, at the same time when the liquid droplet is in contact with the copper plate very quickly heat will be dissipated. That means, when heat will be dissipated through the copper plate uh, very rapidly the solidification liquid phase to solid phase will occur. So, here the thickness of the solidified layer can be around reach to 20 to 50 micrometer. So, basically in that uh, thickness we can we can achieve. 50, 20 to 50 micrometer, but when we are analyzing this solidification, this uh, rapid solidification, definitely rapid solidification, we can achieve very specific structure. So, here is the importance to understand the, the rapid solidification. So, another type of the rapid solidification in the spray uh, atomization in this cases, basically liquid droplet is atomized very rapidly and and when the liquid droplet is basically in contact with the uh, the gas jet, so very rapidly the liquid atomization occurs. In this case, and of course, in the spray using the gaseous medium or cooling medium using we can the helium or argon gas can be used. So here, high thermal diffusivity is factor. Definitely, the high thermal diffusivity is the main factor uh, that actually decides the cooling rate using the uh, from the droplet. The when the velocity of the droplet is relatively small. So, in this case the atomized droplet diameter of around 100 micrometer and in this case helium and uh, can be used as a cooling medium and cooling rate can achieve around 1000 Kelvin per second. So, these are the three different processes we can here you can see that that we can see that on three processes I just just explain this thing. The smell spinning you see the smell spinning the rotating drum is there, we just pouring the liquid metal on the rotating drum and then it uh, the this it creates certain thickness and spread over. But before that going into out of these things, it can solidify. It means that it try to reach the uh, from liquid phase to solid phase in between. Similarly, in gas atomization also you can see the jet, gas jet is on contact with the liquid metal and they create the solidified droplet it can create using the gas atomization process and another is the strip casting process. We use the rotating wheel and this cases we put the liquid metal from here and the this copper drum we can utilize the or wheel uh, made of copper. They quickly solidify the uh, liquid to the solid and we can create a very thin strip solidified strip we can create. So, these are basic structure or basic techniques associated with the different rapid solidification processes. But in general we can say the rapid solidification definitely cooling is so fast that it will always create some kind of the non uh, does not reach the equilibrium status basically always it is going through the some kind of the metastable uh, state. So, for example, this metastable rapid if it is uh, is metal is rapidly cooling or we, uh, or we can say the rapid solidification of the metals is always create some kind of the uh, glass structure. So, in that cases uh, we see the various 
uh, of course, the rapid solidification is all associated to the various non-equilibrium metastable phase. Not we cannot find any kind of the equilibrium phase during the rapid solidification process. So therefore, in in presence, if you know when you try to explain the TTT diagram, time temperature transformation diagram. So therefore, rapid cooling. If you follow the rapid cooling, so it will always try to avoid the nose of the TTT diagram. If you if you observe, if you remember the TTT diagram uh, in this case where we can plot the TTT composition, temperature and we can say the different cooling rate. So that cooling rate is uh, very close to the y axis. So in that case, the, in, in the case the cooling rate is very, very high. So therefore, rapid solidification occurs we can say just looking into the TTT diagram that it will never cross to the nose of the TTT diagram of that in the transformation observed in, in a TTT diagram uh, of a particular binary phase uh, alloy system. So therefore, that is the one way to understand the, the which curve indicates the uh, following the rapid solidification process. So therefore, definitely rapid solidification happens in such a way that nucleus and formation is actually suppressed and liquid becomes very super cooled. So these are the another factors associated with the rapid solidification and once it is done, the when temperature of the uh, liquid decreases, so definitely when liquid decreases temperature, then in that case the viscosity also increases very quickly. But of course, below certain temperature, the liquid is so viscous that it looks or it behaves like a solid material. So that is why we see that one kind of the typical structure you can expect during the rapid solidification process. So what are the important features we get the rapid solidification process is that first is that we are only get some kind of the metastable phase or metastable state or non-equilibrium metastable phase we observe in case of the rapid solidification. And second point is that when you try to look into the TTT diagram and how to represent the rapid solidification because if you see the TTT diagram the transformation from one phase to another phase diagram. So, it creates some kind of the C curve. So, the cooling rate curve will never touch the, the nose of the C curve. So, when it is not touching it means that we are following the or here it is the curve representing the rapid solidification. And third point is that uh, in the rapid solidification the we know usual solidification the nucleation is basically suppressed and liquid remains very super cool conditions in case of the this uh, rapid solidification and sometimes upon certain below the critical temperature. So, liquid the viscosity of the liquid is such that it behaves like a solid material. So, these are the typical factors or features associated with the rapid solidification process. Now, here you can see we can understand the, the rapid solidification process in the more elaborate way that the solid obtain the freezing liquid a glass it basically create the state of the glass and temperature below liquid behaves like a solid and which is called the glass transition temperature basically it is associated with the glass transition temperature in case of the rapid solidification process. So, a metallic glass can be created by following the rapid solidification process. Now, I was talking about the TTT diagram if you see here the if you see this diagram the time temperature and this is the transformation curve and if you see this is the nose of the transformation curve this point nose of the transformation curve. So, this rapid this indicates this indicates the the cooling curve basically it indicates the constant cooling rate. So, when it is the rapid solidification or rapid cooling occurs. So, basically it will not touch is the below before this nose of this thing in any cooling rate it represents the rapid cooling occurs during this process or if it is goes this cooling curve this cooling curve indicates that it is slow cooling. So, that is we can easily distinguish just looking into the TTT diagram whether to representing the rapid cooling occurs or not uh, during this uh, process. Now, we are talking about that it behaves like a solid one particular uh, critical in a critical state in, in this case the critical value. So, the critical rate in case of the pure metal the critical rate is 10 to the 12 Kelvin per second it is very high. In many of the critical temperature change or critical cooling rate can be 10 to the power 12 it can reach up to 10 to the power 12 Kelvin per second for pure metal. In many oxide system it can be goes around 1 to 10 Kelvin per second. This is the two uh, you can see one is the pure metal another is the oxides many oxides. 
In industry, in that cases, metallic glasses are produced at the critical rate of 10 to the power 6 Kelvin per second. So, metallic glass we can produce specific structure which is follow the rapid solidification process and it can produce at the cooling rate of 10 to the power 6 Kelvin per second. So, therefore, only certain alloy system over a certain composition range can be quenched into a glass. So, that means we have to look that in the looking into the composition of the material each and composition of the material they can their critical cooling rate can be different. So, we, we alloy system if we want to produce some uh, metallic glass on a particular composition of the alloy system then we have to look into that what is the critical cooling rate such that it will follow the rapid solid we can define the rapid solidification and based on that this cooling rate can be different over the with change in the composition of the particular alloy system. So, these are all about the uh, rapid solidification. Now, we will try to look into another process, solidification processing that is called the semi solid processing. Semi solid processing is basically is a manufacturing technique in which the partially liquid or semi solid metal is basically used for the working. So, that can utilize for the different manufacturing process the in the semi solid lacquer, um, uh, the semi solid component. So, we know that material exhibits properties both the liquid and the solid and the liquid due to semi solid state. So, it, it can behave both like a solid and liquid combining these things when you are talking about the semi solid state for a material. Now, the working temperature of the semi solid processing is basically between the solidus and liquidus temperature and semi solid always behave like a non Newtonian fluid. So, you understand the non Newtonian fluid that uh, where shear stress is proportional to the this velocity gradient then it will it will create the this Newtonian fluid. So, tau is proportional to del u by del y if you remember when you try to fluid mechanics the shear stress proportional this is Newtonian fluid when when it is not then it is non-linear then it becomes the non-Newtonian fluid. So, basically semi solid behaves like a, uh, a non-Newtonian fluid. Here shear is but in, in how practically implement the semi solid processing. So, basically in this case the regular solidification processing which is regular solidification processing means it will create some kind of the dendritic structure and uh, follow we do not need we do not use any kind of the external aid to modify the solidification process and but if you do not disturb the solidification process I mean to say that without any external aid the solidification is allow it will the alloy is try to create some kind of the dendritic arm and then this different dendritic, arm, dendritic structure it will try to follow, it will try to create. But somehow during the solidification process if we apply the shearing of the liquid, then it will continue shearing of the liquid in, in during the solidification phase. So, that means between the solidus and liquidus temperature if we apply the shearing action to the liquid metal then it will try to create some kind of the semi solid metal. Then in this case is semi solid metal the structural microstructural significant microstructural difference observed as compared to the normal solidification processes. So, therefore, it is very important to understand the semi solid metal processing and what benefits we can get from the semi solid material processing. You can see the mechanism of the structure evolution during the semi solid processing. So, therefore, when there is no external aid, no steering is applied during the solidified liquid. So, definitely we can expect the dendritic structure. So, initial dendritic it will try to form, then dendritic growth you can form, it is a regular uh, structure uh, during, but when you apply the continuous shear ac shearing action during this process, it will try to change the this kind of the structure dendritic uh, growth will try to will be affected, will be disturbed, it will try to create some kind of the rosset structure then ripen rosette and finally kind of the spheroid kind of the structure will try to create. So, basically it will be modifying the, the structure during the solidification itself from the dendritic to some kind of the uh, spheroid structure by use applying the external shearing or external steering action of the metal. So, this is usually knows and the uh, this semi solid processing. So, semi solid processing if you see this structure usually form mechanism that increasing shear rate and time. So, basically continuously shearing of the material and of course, at the same time there is a when you are using the external aid. So, it will try to create some kind of the decreasing cooling rate will always be decreasing with the application of the external aid. So, in this direction there is a increasing shear rate and time and decreasing the cooling rate it will try to modify from regular 
initial dendritic structure to the spheroid structure. So, here it looks it behaves the material behaves like a slurry not exactly the solid the like a slurry it will create it will behaves like a. So, therefore, viscosity of the slurry during the cooling actually decreases with increasing the shear rate. So, which is the with increasing the shear, shear rate. So, decreasing of the uh, viscosity of the slurry we can observe. Now, at the same time increasing the shear rate and decreasing the cooling rate both actually results in the formation of the dense and the very round particle and that can slide with respect to each other. So, in the semi-solid processing definitely it will create the state of the slurry. Uh, in the slurry we can create the small spherical particles which we try to create if you see observe the solidification occurs in the normal solidification we use the the liquid metal. So, liquid in, in between liquid metals. So, it is a dendrite. So, this is a dendritic structure. So, dendritic is solid phase but remaining at the liquid phase. But here instead of the dendritic it will create the close to the very spherical structure just I explained the mechanism. So, here instead of the dendrite it creates this kind of the, the spherical structure if you see. So, therefore, when the spherical instead of the dendritic structure it will create the round spherical particle. So, when round spherical particle so therefore, it can move can slide with respect to each other during the uh, during the, uh, the the sharing action. So, without less interruption uh, during this process. So, we can see the methods of the to producing the non dendritic slurry. So, that means spherical kind of the structure particle structure during the or I can say the it is better to say the non dendritic structure. Non dendritic structure in this case is very it will try to form the spherical uh, structure. Uh, so, non dendritic structure to spherical structure what we can produce we can see during the solidification there is a, a mixture continuous steering this is the liquid metal and it is when solidification occur when the solidified component will semi solid will come out here then it will create the, the structure will be modified. So, instead of the dendritic structure it will be the uh, non dendritic uh, spheroid kind of the structure we can observe. So, this is the one way to practically implement the semi solid processing. Second one is the shearing cooling roll process in this case we see the in this case the molten metal is poured from this side and we use the rotating roll. So, rotating roll from one side to another side. So, it will create the shearing action in this particular process and the in contact so, during the shearing action that means we are basically following the semi solid processing and will our results will be the semi solid metal here. Similarly, the cooling plate process cooling plate process means we can use the uh, this liquid metal with the high conductive material we can we can put it and the shearing because when you metal liquid metal travel from this point to another point. So, it will automatically with respect to the plate the it will shearing will happens that because of the gravitational force of the liquid metal to continue the flow of the liquid metal and the shearing will action between the this plate and the liquid metal contact. So, therefore, this way in this case just to use the gravitational force without any external force or external setting action is not required and we can create the semi solid metal and the semi solid metal it, that semi solid metal is created and you can use this thing. So, I mean to say that through the semi solid processing we can create some kind of the non dendritic slurry we can create it and maybe this the structurally it is different from the typical dendritic structure in case of the uh, solidification in, in, in case of the welding or maybe in, in case of the uh, casting process. Now, so advantage of the semi solid process we can see that better control over the material flow and basically in this cases we can reduce the porosity, uh, we can reduce some kind of the cracking. So, basically segregation of interdendritic spacing all these kind of things can be possible through the semi solid processing. Even in case of the enhanced fluidity basically you see the fluidity can be enhanced in, in the semi solid processing that will ensure the complete filling of the mold. So, that is another process though if the very complex mold shape is there. So, the, the before reaching the corner point of the mold. So, most of the cases the liquid metal can solidify, but if you use the semi solid processing it helps the influence the enhance the fluidity. So, it is try to fill the this uh, complete filling of the mold that is one advantage we can achieve and very fine and uniform structure we can expect in the semi solid processing that we observe because it is to try to create from the uh, non dendritic spheroid structure in this case. 
and of course semi-solid processing is basically since the fluidity is very good as compared to the conventional liquid metal pouring so very near net shape structure is possible to produce using the semi-solid processing so these are the typical advantage we can achieve uh, in a semi-solid processing now we will try to explain this the directional uh, the solidification processing but there are the different types of the solidification processing uh, we can say the directional solidification progressive and the eutectic solidification so these three different types of the solidification processing helps to understand the solidification behavior and that will help to modify the structure or try to develop different kind of the manufacturing processes to understand that uh, just to these three different types of the solidification uh, processes. So, one is the directional solidification. So, yeah, it is very obvious that directional solidification means if you control the solidification growth one particular direction, then it is called the solidification, directional solidification. So, in that case, definitely the heat has to be extract one particular direction, okay, and we have to promote the high rate of the heat ex extraction one direction so therefore growth will try to follow in this particular direction so generally it is follow occurs from one end of the to the other end if you follow this uh, figure sequence of these figures so here the mold is slowly pulled so if you see this is the mold metal molten metal this is the coolant so this is the coolant and this is the molten metal so this molten metal is slowly cooled pulled out from the furnace into the coolant so basically we keep the molten metal from the furnace to the coolant okay now definitely when it is in contact with the coolant the nucleation starts at the cold side of the mold definitely it is the coolant is there this side so nucleation will start at this particular position towards the coolant side so once the coolant nucleation starts now once if we try to pull the downward direction towards the coolant so definitely the crystal growth along the temperature so steepest temperature gradient will occur this direction so because we are pulling gradually to the coolant so heat extraction will be much more towards that direction so definitely crystal growth will occur on that particular direction so once it is completely fully solidified and if you see the solidification once one one particular unidirectional so this is called the unidirectional crystal growth we observe using this very simple procedure that is called the directional solidification <coughs> of course unidirectionally aligned grain will be definitely it will try to always try to go for the paper crystallographic orientation it will try to it always try to can obtain so you can see there is a column columnar structure is observed on one particular direction so proper alignment results in the formation of the columnar grain so we see the columnar grain occurs one particular direction but the directional solidification technique is usually used for example turbine blade so and some kind of the high performance material and to, we can try to follow the directional solidification because turbine blade so basically strength is one particular direction is more important so property as compared to the other lateral direction so therefore if you follow the directional solidification the strength is or properties is much more improved or properties is very stronger one particular direction so that is the use of the in directional solidification and here we can use we can observe the directional solidification in case of the turbine blade because turbine blade in the centrifugal direction the turbine blade is subjected to much more amount of the load so therefore it should be very strong along the centrifugal direction but properties can be less important along the other direction and then the lateral direction so that's why so we want to get basically the direction solidification happens when you try to achieve some particular properties one particular direction then we try to follow the directional solidification there is another solidification process which is called the progressive solidification so it is very general term that actually describes the gradual and continuous transformation of the metal metal from liquid state to the solidification state without any predetermined orientation of the grain so it's a very i can say that it's a natural solidification occurs on case of the alloy that is called the progressive solidification it's a basically naturally occurs and cool down materials during the solidification process so change the phase from uh, liquid phase to the solid phase so therefore we are the microstructure usually occurs in the random microstructure because it is a naturally cooling there is no direct solidification so therefore the properties of the material can vary across the structure depending upon the structure but this microstructure depends on the cooling rate such as cooling rate that means how fast heat is extracted what is the alloy compositions 
and what is the design of the mold. So, alloy composition and design of the mold all are the factors that actually decides the microstructure of the, the in case of the progressive solidification process and finally, the properties of the uh, progressive solidification process. So, definitely it may happen such that uneven growth may, might happen the solidification front which can create some kind of the porosity also if there is an uneven solidification. Uh, so, some defects like porosity, some shrinkage may also happen if you do not properly design the, the mold. Okay. So, therefore, odd can be associated because it is a very natural uh, process. So, what we understand these things probably you can see that it may happen something like that this is a very orbit shape of the liquid matter. So, the different area, different area, the rate of the heat exchange are different. So, solidification front moves in the different speed or different velocity and we can see the liquid can shrink, uh, it is not following any, any directive, uh, directive during the solidification. So, here you can see or maybe certain part it might happen so the cooling rate is very fast. So, very small part it can may achieve go through the directional solidification and other part depending upon the design of the mold might not have to the directional. So, very random solidification might occur. So, therefore, in this part the solidification is very random, is very natural cooling process in the solid progressive solidification and therefore, you can expect the non-uniform property. But other part we can achieve the directional properties also because the heat extraction rate is very high one particular direction. So, we can achieve the benefit of the directional solidification. So, in directional solidification definitely we can try to move the planar movement of the solidification usually occurs and which is perpendicular to the mold wall. And of course, we can achieve the uniform material properties at the directional solidified section. So, progressive solidification might happen I can we can say that we it is a very random microstructure you can expect in the progressive solidification process. Another solidification process that is called the eutectic solidification. So, this type of the solidification is usually occurs the we see the a particular alloy system where two or more alloying elements are involved and of course, we can explain by just looking at the um, binary alloy system. So, during the solidification one particular composition they can create the eutectic composition and the symmetrical solidification of the it can decompose into the two different phases. So, basically in the eutectic composition we can say an example if the eutectic composition uh, is like that. So, basically when liquid liquid is basically when the during the cooling or after solidification liquid can decompose into the two different phases alpha two different solid phases. So, but it happens on particular composition so, that is called the eutectic composition. So, at eutectic composition at eutectic temperature this eutectic solidification usually occurs and in this case the one liquid phase is converted to the two different solid phases. Now, eutectic solidification occurs when eutectic composition definitely eutectic composition is reached and of course, at particular temperature this solidification occurs that is called the eutectic temperature uh, which is determined by, uh, but eutectic temperature we can observe from the phase diagram we have to look into the phase diagram. From there we can find out what is the eutectic composition and what is the eutectic temperature this uh, solidification occurs. So, usually if you see this if you see that uh, this particular phase diagram uh, which is more close to the iron carbon equilibrium diagram we can observe the eutectic point also. So, eutectic solidification or eutectic composition. So, here you see this is the we mentioned this as a eutectic point. So, this eutectic point one particular composition is corresponds to one composition. This composition is fixed for a binary alloy system. For a binary alloy system one composition is fixed the eutectic composition. So, it this reaction will only happen at that particular composition only. Now, the solidification occurs then we liquid phase to solid phase occurs in the this temperature T e which is called the eutectic temperature. So, this eutectic temperature this solidification usually occurs and during the solidification if you see the liquid composition is converted to the two different solid phases. But if you see this is the composition but this composition is not associated with the eutectic composition of course, it creates the alpha plus beta phase from liquid phase to transformation from here from liquid phase to liquid plus alpha phase and from liquid plus alpha phase to finally, it is converted to the alpha plus beta phase. But this is not the eutectic composition or this is not the eutectic solidification. So, eutectic solidification occurs only this composition, this particular composition of the binary alloy system. Now, 
see uh, typical structure of the uh, eutectic solidification is the lamellar structure. So, alternate layer of the two different phases usually occurs or fiber structures of the different phases usually observed in during the eutectic solidification process. Now, of course, the eutectic composition, but the structure, grain structure, microstructure actually depends on the, the size of the structure or size of the grains, it depends on the or size of the lamellar, it depends on the cooling rate or cooling rate and of course alloy system, the cooling rate conditions and the alloy system. One particular cooling rate and alloy system means it definitely depends on the one binary phase diagram or, or binary phase alloy, the only eutectic composition uh, can create this eutectic solidification, but the size of the grain it depends on the uh, cooling rate. Now, we see observe the whole solidification process basically if you, we are discussing the it is a material processing and more as the casting welding the solidification process a uh, casting welding and forming process. But uh, the solidification is mainly associated with the casting and welding process. Now, if you try to understand, if you know we have basic understanding of the casting process and welding process, but in the perspective of the solidification, what we can differentiate between the solidification in the solidification process in casting and the welding technology. We see in the welding process that how it occurs is a very localized heating and primarily laser arc or different welding torch is basically used to fuse the material but very localized position and that localized position is uh, volume is very small as compared to the cast component and this is allowed to solidification occurs at this particular uh, small whirlpool volume. So, here you see the molten whirlpool forms from the liquid this part and when the this liquid metal travels from one position to another position, so gradually the solidification occurs at this part. So, usually in the welding process the solidification it we can observe the high cooling rate and due to the heat sink effect of the surrounding metal because high cooling rate in the sense that the whirlpool size is very small, but it is surrounded by the large back material. So, bulk material is surrounded by the very small liquid molten pool, but which is surrounded by the large amount of the material. So, surrounding material act as a heat sink. So, therefore, in the surrounding material act as a heat sink basically the cooling rate becomes very fast. So, usually in case of the welding process. Now, if you look into the casting process, casting process is the molten metal is poured into the mold cavity usually very high and this mold this uh, the liquid metal is basically created in a using a furnace, it is a melted in a furnace and from the furnace it is poured into the mold cavity and in the mold cavity we allow to do the solidification to occurs. So, usually this casting occurs for a very large, I am talking about the, the if you look into the mold casting, the sand mold casting, in that case the this uh, cast component size of the cast components, so billet and all these things is usually very high, usually very big. So, therefore, in large molten material volume is associated in the casting as compared to the uh, welding process. So, we can expect that large since large volume is there, we can expect the, the cooling rate is relatively slower as compared to the welding process. So, here is the basic differences between the, uh, the welding process and the uh, casting process. So, definitely that will influence the structure also. So, since the there is a cooling rate molten material volume are different uh, or uh, one case it is smaller, another case it is bigger. So, that will try to influence the, the microstructure in a welding and the casting process. But of course, we, it's always try to link with the uh, it's actually influence the solidification behavior I, we can say like that. So, in case of the oiling process we can observe relatively higher cooling rate and which is definitely when higher cooling rate is there the microstructure will be very fine. And of course, in case of the oiling process, so we just we apply the heat flux and it creates a small oil pool volume. So, but along with this oil pool it definitely would create some kind of the heat affected zone. So, heat affected zone which is the solid state phase transformation usually occurs in the heat affected zone. So, but heat affected zone the it is a the temperature between the below the melting point temperature, but ab above the any kind of the phase transformation temperature. So, therefore, distinguished heat affected zone is associated with the uh, welding process, but this heat affected zone is not associated with the casting process. So, therefore, Microstructure morphology significantly in the heat welded zone, heat affected zone and the mold base metal zone can be typically explained by this particular figure. In this figure it is explained that that one welding torch is moving 
one particular direction. So, it is a simultaneous, it is a melting and the solidification occurs, but it is moving one particular direction. In this case, it is moving in this direction. When it is moving, we can expect that this part is the molten oil pool. So, the columnar dendritic growth will try to occur in this always normal to this surface and this is the columnar structure. So, surrounding this part is the columnar structure, but at the center point in this case the solidification will occur at the at the end. So, therefore, in this there they create the favorable situation to create some kind of the the equiex kind of the microstructure. So, in this case equiex dendritic structure is usually observed at the center point, but remaining part we can observe the columnar kind of the dendritic structure. So, this is a typical structure of any kind of the fusion welded alloy. So, uh, fusion welded alloy you can expect this kind of the structure and this is the typical structure of a fusion welding process. So, strength and hardness increases in the oil zone due to the fine microstructure definitely microstructure is fine means the strength and hardness will be much more uh, in this cases because of the very fine microstructure. But problem is that during the oiling process it will try to do the solidification, uh, but it is usually rapid solidification, not rapid exactly the solidification rate is very high uh, or cooling rate is relatively more. So, therefore, it will always create some kind of the residual stress and distortion in a welded structure which is usually occurs of the, the, the after the solidification of the molten pool. So, uh, this is the typical. Uh, structure associated with the welding, but if you look into the casting process, we see the cooling rate is very slow and therefore, you can expect the coarse microstructure and which this coarse structure can vary from wall to the center because during uh, at the wall, so basically the solidification starts at the wall. So, more or less equiex kind of the structure usually formed during the uh, at the wall. Above that, it is a columnar structure is formed and towards the center. At the end, the solidification occurs at the center. So, therefore, we can get more or less the equiex kind of the structure at the center. So, definitely the columnar dendritic structure is ob observed in the wall and at the center the equiex kind of the structure. This is the typical cast structure of a billet uh, during the casting process. But overall, if you look compare between the uh, welded and the cast structure, so the microstructure, uh, this grain structure is basically coarse structure you can observe. Coarse means the grain structure is bigger relatively as compared to the welded component. So, here is the fine microstructure and here is the coarse structure you can observe. So, definitely if strength and hardness is basically low in the sense that it is the creates a kind of the coarse structure because cooling rate is relatively slow in case of the cast component. And but in this case cast component we know there is a phase change occurs. So, therefore, only associated with some kind of the shrinkage and when volume is very high. So, therefore, the so volumetric shrinkage will, will be much more in a cast component and therefore, we can observe that the defects are kind of shrinkage defects some kind of the porosity which is the main problem associated with the uh, casting process. So, here I have tried to explain the perspective of the solidification what are the typical structure you can observe or how solidification influence the structure microstructure in case of the welding process and microstructure in case of the uh, casting process. So, I think that is all uh, for the solidification. Uh, I have tried to explain the little bit the basic understanding different solidification techniques in this particular module or the very basics of the solidification processes um, associated with the, the casting and the welding process. I hope uh, this understanding of the solidification will try to explain the the formation of the different kind of the microstructure when you try to follow any uh, other kind of the manufacturing process where solidification is involved. So, thank you very much for your kind attention.